the Middle Ages down to modern times. The magic of chemistry has fascinated mankind. And to the boy of today, the subject is even more exciting. For this is the age of industrial chemistry. With vastly widened application of chemical research in manufacturing, it has attained importance undreamed of just a few years ago. All around us are the products of modern chemistry. Window shades, draperies, upholstery, and furniture. All are made of or covered with something that came out of a test tube. Radio cabinets, tabletops, and hundreds of other useful articles are made of new plastics created in the chemist's laboratory. Chemistry takes a hand in the very clothes we wear. Rayon is a luxurious fabric developed from the cellulose fibers of trees and plants. Would you believe that the leftover fuzz of cotton seeds is used to make the material which forms the backs of mirrors, combs, and brushes? Yes, the lowly cotton seed, through a chemical process, is turned into something much prettier than ivory that can be made in all the colors of the rainbow. But unlike natural ivory, this material won't crack or discolor with age. Chemistry is responsible, too, for the gossamer-like threads of these new stockings. By a miracle of modern science, such commonplace things as coal, water, and air have been transformed into threads more elastic than silk, spun from filaments even finer than those of a spider's web, yet many times as strong. Rainy. Then it's chemistry to the rescue. Something that came out of a test tube is going to protect her from that shower. Here, folded into a compact little package, is a transparent raincoat, rainproof like rubber. Of a similar material are some of the new umbrellas and parasols, combining utility with beauty of design and color. Now let it rain. From other chemical processes come refrigerants that keep foods fresh, wrappings that keep things clean, insulation and wallboard to improve our buildings. Nature constantly wears away its own. Left to themselves, materials eventually decay. The pitted side of a rock the rotting wood of a fence post, and the rusting odds and ends in the neighborhood junkyard, all bear testimony to the destructive forces of air, wind, and water. Cleopatra's needle, the famous Egyptian obelisk in Central Park, New York, is centuries old. Over all these years, nature's forces have attacked the stone but now it has been sprayed with a finish that will preserve the famous stone pillar for centuries to come. Chemistry has also taken a hand in the preservation of wood. In this great laboratory at Madison, Wisconsin, the United States Forest Service has conducted more than half a million experiments, not only to find new uses for wood, but to lengthen its life. And now, fence posts, telegraph poles, any wooden product used outdoors will do a better job of defying the elements. Another natural product made better by chemistry is rubber. Years of research were necessary in order to improve the product. And then testing in great machines, subjecting it to terrific punishment. Today, rubber products are tougher and stronger and have a longer life. Longer life has been given the gasoline engine, too. For years, engineers were puzzled when certain engine parts like piston pins and valve stems became corroded and prematurely worn. The engineers called upon the chemists, 
who traced the corrosion to sulfuric acid fumes formed in the engine. As a result of their studies, this ventilating system was developed to draw clean air through the engine, carrying off the harmful fumes and giving our automobiles a longer, useful life. The prevention of rust is another concern of the industrial chemist. Here, we see what happens when an ordinary nail is left outdoors for a long period. As time goes on, the iron returns to its natural form, iron oxide, just plain rust to you and me. Studies of the action of rust by means of microscopic photography and many experiments resulted in the development of rust-proofing operations for metals. Automobile bodies, for instance, are sprayed with a chemical that helps the metal to resist the elements. Bodies and fenders are treated so they'll resist the action of moisture. Then, there's the surface finish of the automobile, subjected to all kinds of weather, to mud, water, and sand, to soot and smoke from city chimneys, which cover the surface with a film of gritty, scratching particles. Snow, rain, or sleet do their best to dull the gloss. And even in clear weather, there's always the gentle dew, another enemy of the finish. But chemical research has developed a finish to resist such attacks. Panels of metal covered with different types of finish are constantly tested in special machines. 30 hours in this machine, under strong ultraviolet rays, is equal to a solid year under the burning rays of a tropical sun. Now, the test panels are placed in the weatherometer. Here they are subjected to another ultraviolet ray treatment under intense heat. The machine revolves hour after hour, and each test panel gets a bath with every revolution, as well as intense light and heat. From the heat of the weatherometer, the test panels go into the sub-freezing temperature of a special refrigerator. Then the finish on each panel is examined. Constant experiment has shown which finishes are the best. And the result of years of patient chemical research is the surface finish used on today's most modern cars, combining with its protective qualities the radiance of sparkling colors. The automobile of today is a thing of beauty. Yes, chemistry has changed the world we live in. From wells deep in the ground, from the mine, the forest, and the farm, come the materials which are being transformed into all manner of new products. Great things have been done but much more remains to be accomplished. Some young man, perhaps one watching this very picture, may develop a startling new formula from a test tube experiment, may give the world finer things to use, to wear, to better man's health. In this new world of industrial chemistry, the horizon is unlimited. Unexplored potentialities beckon. Hidden secrets of nature sound a call to this young man, the industrial chemist, the pioneer of tomorrow. <laughs>